Good day, YouTubers. This is episode eight in the series on Central Moreton Bay. And I really can't believe we've got this far. When I started this, I would never have said there was going to be eight episodes in it. Surely we're about halfway through by now, but there's still a bit to go. So we'll just keep plugging away at it. I do hope you're enjoying them and getting some useful information. I'm going to have a look at the foul ground and Harry Atkinson's reef in this episode. I was never one to fish the artificial reefs. When they first started, I just ignored them and kept fishing the reefs as I knew. But in the last three years, I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone and learn a lot of new stuff. So I've started fishing the artificial reefs like Harry Atkinson's. I won't say I'm real good at it yet. I've still got a lot to learn and there's guys that do a lot better than me. But I am managing to catch a few good fish, which is promising. Anyway, enough yakking. Let's roll the clip. Heading back across the bay to the west from Day's Gutter, the next point of interest is the foul ground. I'm not sure what the actual history of the foul ground is. I have heard it was a dumping ground for rubbish, and given what I've seen on the bottom on the sounder, that sounds about right. The key point is that that rubbish attracts fish, and there's one area in particular that attracts a lot of fish. The foul ground is shown on the maps as a circular area, and is located northwest of the entrance to the Rouse Channel. I'll give you a couple of GPS marks to look at inside that area. One of these marks in particular is very good. You can't miss it on the bottom, there's a mound of rubbish down there. But if it's a general dumping ground, I can't believe that's the only area where there's a mound of rubbish. I think it'd have to be more. I haven't found any myself. I haven't seen anyone fishing in any area other than these marks. So chances are there are no other areas. I just find that a bit hard to believe if it was a general dumping ground. So I haven't given up looking yet. The southwestern boundary of the foul ground pretty much butts up against the northeastern boundary of Harry Atkinson's Reef. So it's not very far from Harry's. If you're not doing any good at Harry's, it's a good idea to flip over to the foul ground and have a try there, or vice versa. There's one main mark that I've got a green cross on. That's very close to the centre of the foul ground. You can't miss it on the bottom. There's a big pile of rubbish down there, and on a good day, it's lit up with fish. Now, I've been over it, and I just couldn't believe how many fish were there one day. Unfortunately, it was in the middle of the snapper closure season, and I didn't have a lot of time. I was on my way home, so I didn't even drop a line to see what they were, but, oh, gee, talk about fish down there. The other thing about it is it's a fairly publicly known mark. I think everyone knows this mark, or everyone that knows about the foul ground knows this mark and it's pretty popular. If you want to fish it and you want to get on the spot and you do need to be fairly close to the spot to catch fish, then you need to get there super early or even get there the night before and camp it. Now I've been past that mark on some days and I've seen several baits there within about 40 feet of each other. That's pretty close for anchoring. And when you get a group of baits drifting, that can be mayhem. If you want to roll the dice and see if you can get onto the spot, there's a GPS mark for you to try. I'll head over there fairly often if I'm looking for some fish and I'm not doing any good at Harry's or the Rouse, I might go out there. If there's a lot of baits pulled up there, I'll just go on to somewhere else. There's plenty of other places in the bay. There's a couple of other marks to the north of here that someone gave me. I haven't actually fished them myself. I've had a look at them and I haven't found anything on the bottom to be very interesting. But the fellow that gave them to me said it was okay to share them and that he had caught some fish there himself don't doubt that he's caught fish there himself, I believe him, he's an honest guy, but the fact that he's sharing some marks that he generally doesn't share, and he said it's okay to share them with other people, makes me think that they're not his best marks. Actually, I'm pretty sure they're not his best marks. Nevertheless, they're there, I do believe he's caught fish there. I've had a look, but I might have been there at the wrong time of day, the wrong tide, who knows what. It's probably worth giving him a look if you're going past, just slow down for a minute and have a look on the sound to see what you can see. But other than that, up to you if you want to try them. I did have some really nice screenshots of the foul ground and what's down there, but unfortunately I ran out of hard drive space a little while ago and I had to cull a lot of stuff that I thought I didn't need just so I could keep making videos. Despite the fact that there was four or five boats fishing there and I was weaving in amongst them very slowly, trying to stay far enough away not to upset anyone, but still get some decent scans of what was down there. I did manage to pass pretty close to the centre of the rubble and I got the scan showing there's a few fish hanging around it. You can't miss it, whatever's on the bottom, you, you can't miss it. If you get over it, you'll know it's there and you'll know you're on the spot. So there you have it, that's the foul ground. 
It's a big area, and if it was a general dumping ground, I find it hard to believe that there's not other fishing spots there, but that's the only ones that I actually know about. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Harry's doesn't need much of an introduction, given that it's a car park most weekends. It's a good spot to fish, no doubt about that, and I've seen some fellas pull some great fish out of there. I pulled one or two out myself, but I haven't quite come to terms with fishing artificial reefs yet, particularly Harry's. Through most of my life I've fished the shallow reefs around Morton Bay and then fished outside as well. And when they first started putting in the artificial reefs, I didn't worry much about them. I just thought oh, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Seems that there's a bit of a technique in it and I'm slowly coming to terms with it, but it's taking time. I'll just take a moment to go into some of the history of Harry's because it is a little bit fascinating. It covers 34 hectares and it was started in 1975 and over five years, 1975 to 1980, they dumped 17,000 old car tyres there. It was a good idea at the time to dump the tyres there and attract the fish. I don't know whether it's a good idea anymore. I think if we tried to do it now, the greenies would go berserk. Nothing much happened after that until 1987 when they had a couple of hundred old shopping trolleys and they dumped them there as well. After all this time, I don't think there'd be much left to the shopping trolleys, and I sort of expect that the car tyres would have broken down as well and disappeared. Again, nothing much happened until 2008, when they further extended the site by dumping 150 cubic metres of quarry rock in various parts of it. 2010 saw some more activity. In March, they scuttled the tuna boat, Twiwi Pearl, there. And later on in August, they sank 450 tonnes of concrete pipe in four locations. Each cluster consists of about 23 pipes of varying size, and the height of each cluster ranges somewhere between 2.5 and, and 8 metres above the seafloor. The last addition to the reef structure was made in 2014, when they sank a 26 metre, 60 tonne barge that was donated by the Port of Brisbane. The Twiwi Pearl is one very popular and well-known spot to fish on the reef. And just a little bit of history on that, that was built in Mobile, Alabama, in the United States of America in the mid-60s. It has a gross tonnage of 157. It's just over 24 metres in length and has a beam just over 6.5 metres. It's about 12 metres from the keel to the highest point, but you needn't worry about that because there's 8 metres of water over top of that, so no problems going over top of the Kiwi Pearl. How we came to get the pearl as part of our reef is that there was a fire on board and the owners decided to write it off and break it up for scrap. But somehow we managed to acquire it for part of our reef, which is a good thing because it has become the home for many fish. These couple of screenshots of the Twiwi pearl that you've been looking at were taken just after I got my Rainmarine sounder. I hadn't learned to tune it in at all. These are all automatic settings. So it's not too bad a job for taking it straight out of the box and just using it on automatic. As you can tell from these shots, there's no way you're going to miss the Wee Wee Pearl. If you go over top of it, you're going to see it on your sounder, even if all you've got is a TD sounder. There's not nearly as many ships down here as there are over at Curtin Artificial Reef, but there's still a substantial amount of structure and it does attract a lot of fish. I've pulled a couple of good fish out of here, but other people I see just nail it. They just come back with fish after fish. Just exceptional. They obviously have figured out how to fish this, what sort of rig to use, what tides to fish, how much current you need to have flowing to get the fish around it, and just where exactly in the reef to fish. I wouldn't recommend fishing directly over the structure. I think you should fish beside it, but just how far away from it's an open question. There's one fella on one of the Facebook groups that always comes up with 90 centimetre snapper, and he fishes Harry's a fair bit. He says that you shouldn't be, I think it was any closer than about 30 metres to structure, which is about 100 feet. Now that's further away than I would have thought, but he certainly produces the good, so there's no doubt he knows what he's talking about, so that's what I've been trying lately. When I'm at Harry's I always spot lock with the Minkota or anchor up if I'm staying overnight. A lot of people like to drift through there, but I'm not a big fan of drifting when there's a lot of boats around because I fish by myself and if I get distracted trying to land a fish I don't want to have to keep a lookout for what bait I'm going to run into while I'm drifting. If you've got a couple of blokes on board it's not such an issue. So up to you which method you want to try. Drifting certainly covers more ground but anchoring up in the right spot I think does just as well. 
I've tried a few times to set up a search pattern over Harry's and mark all of these spots where the structure on the bottom, but there's so many boats there that it's nearly impossible to do it. I have covered a lot of these screenshots before, but I've put them in now just so you can have a look to see what you can expect to find on the bottom at Harry's. And where I know the coordinates where I took that screenshot, I've put them with the screenshot, but other than that, I've marked all of the spots that I know about, even if they don't have an image on another slide. And just before we leave Harry's, I'll just mention the rig I used there. I'm not saying it's the best rig because, as I say, I caught a few good fish there, really good fish there, but I'm certainly no expert at fishing Harry's. I often use a Pat and Oster rig and I put two hooks on it, 8 0 Gamagatsu circle hooks, and depending on the current, I'll put an 8 to 16 ounce sinker on the bottom of that. The other rig I use is two snelled Gamagatsu 8 0 circle hooks. And depending on the current, I'll put a ball sinker on top of them or just let them float. The idea of that rig is to have it in the water column, not on the bottom. For bait, there's no doubt that liveys are best, so make sure you take a sabiki rig and see if you can catch some. But don't rely on them. Just in case, I always take some frozen bait. I like frozen squid. Now you don't want to go too small with that. I always pick something that's medium to large. Calamari is also very good. Get either whole calamari or calamari heads, they're quite good as well. If you decide to go with a whole calamari, it's a huge bait at times, so you'll need a snell rig or something similar to put it on. You can't go wrong with some pilchards, either use them whole or cut them in half, depending on what hook size you're using. Never overlook some mullet fillets, cut them into strips to bait them, they're an excellent bait as well. And if you can't catch the live yakas, you can at least take some frozen ones. The prawns used to be a standby of mine. I tend not to use them as much these days, and I can't honestly say why. I just stopped using them for some reason. But they're a good bait, and a lot of people swear by them, so consider them as well. But whatever bait you decide on, the critical thing is to have some very good quality bait. And when it comes to quality, that means getting it from the right place, getting the right brand, etc. A lot of people buy their bait at BCF or at a garage on the way to the ramp. Now, personally, I wouldn't feed that stuff to my goldfish. It's rubbish. Don't bother with it. You catch a lot more fish if you get onto some really good bait. If you're lucky enough to live up in Harvey Bay, there seems to be a million places where you can buy good bait up there. But down here in Brisbane, it's a different story. I've looked around quite a bit, and yes, there's a few places where you can get good bait, but for me, most of them are well out of the way. A year or two ago, I found Mr. Bait over at Hemet. I found his bait to be really excellent. I've caught some really good fish on it, and it is just streets ahead of anything you'll buy at BCF. If you haven't found somewhere to buy some good bait, I suggest you go and give him a go. He sells tackle and all sorts of things as well, crab pots, he's got some really good heavy duty crab pots. I'll put a link in the description with his address, phone number and website so that you can have a look for yourself. I'm not getting a kickback for this or anything, so don't think I'm just shilling it. I'm just putting it out there for you because I've been using it for a year or two now and I'm just really happy with the bait he provides. As for the species of fish you'll catch at Harry's, I've personally caught tuna, mackerel, snapper, grass sweetlip, sharks, mowong, and even a couple of whiting. But I have heard of other people catching parrot and quite a few other species, so there's plenty of variety there. Well, that seems to be it for this video. I'd just like to finish off by saying that harries and the fowl ground do fish well, but to fish them, you really need to do it midweek or at night. It's just a car park on the weekends during the day and with so many baits around there the fish don't seem to be quite as keen to jump on your line. It is of course possible to catch fish on the weekends, a lot of people do it. It just seems a lot easier to do during the week, to me at least. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video, I hope you learned something out of it and hope you give these areas a go. Don't forget to click that like button if you did get something out of it. If you're not a subscriber already, Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you get notified when I upload the next video. Until then, good fishing.